greetings from Montenegro. I'm Marko Merdak, Deputy Chief Negotiator for the EU Accession Process of Montenegro. These days, Montenegro, as many other countries around the world, is gradually returning to normality. Uh, and at the moment, we only have about six active uh, cases of COVID-19 and hopefully uh, in a matter of days we will become one of the first COVID-free destinations. So in the case you are actually actively thinking about your destination uh, vacation, Montenegro would definitely be one of the uh, top picks, I suggest you. While discussing the experiences and uh, upcoming period uh, of COVID-19, I would uh, among various topics, I would uh, definitely choose, let's say, three. Those would be solid solidarity, uh, healthcare, and uh, readiness or willingness to change or adapt to certain situation. Speaking of solidarity, it was I think it was, uh, it was the the biggest uh, word in the international community, and it did put to the test plenty of uh, relations, multilateral, bilateral, worldwide. But from the Montenegrin point of view, since our greatest political and economic partner is European Union, I think in the, in the moments of the greatest need, EU did react quickly and it gave a significant amount of support uh, in financial terms, both when it comes to the providing necessary medical equipment to cope with COVID-19 situation, but also when it comes to supporting uh, consequences of the of the COVID-19, so in uh, in the process of rebuilding the national national economy, so our partnership did uh, did grow stronger. I think uh, the, it did pass through solidarity test through this uh, very intense uh, situation. Speaking of the healthcare system, um, I think we all need to pay a huge respect. To, to our healthcare workers, especially in Montenegro, because we were the last country to report a COVID-19 case, but also one of the first to become, let's say, the destination free, free zone. And in that process, we really managed to flatten the curve as, as, uh, as much as possible. So from, from this experience, uh, government is uh, decisive to invest more in the healthcare structure since we really, since we've really seen how much uh, strength of the national healthcare system really plays a huge role in protecting, in protecting the, the whole population. So after this crisis, Montenegro uh, tends to invest even heavily uh, more significant in the in, in the whole infrastructure, and last but not least, uh, willingness to change or adapt. Uh, this comes uh, to my mind, especially when we are speaking about uh, the educational system, because this uh, crisis period of crisis may be the beginning of the on the highly intensified online era because we have seen how the whole educational system, such as in Montenegro, we could transform within a week. So in, uh, in less than a week, I think, uh, Montenegro in uh, um, elementary school, medium school and high school were completely transformed and all the lessons, homeworks and, uh, and, ass and assignments were basically done, done online, which actually shows you how uh, reforms can be done in a, in a matter of days, uh, regardless of their, their uh, size, if there is a strong motive and willingness to change or adapt. That would be my quick, uh, quick takeaways, let's say, from, from this COVID-19. Uh, COVID Thank you and uh, greetings again from Montenegro.